In the headlines, death toll from Zaria Mok's collapse rises to 10 as Christian Association of Nigeria condoles with Muslim Ummah. Troops neutralize three bandits, rescue 10 kidnapped victims, and recover AK-47 rifle in Kaduna State. Detained Niger President Bazoum receives medical attention. Doctor says he is fine. Away from Nigeria, rebel group attacks police convoy in Somaliland. Nine officers killed, 17 other injured. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Abdurrahman Umar. Thanks for joining. And now the news in full. Death toll from a mox collapse in Zaria Kaduna State has risen to 10, with seven injured. The incident occurred at 4 p.m. on Friday when Muslim worshippers were observing their evening prayer. The Emir of Zazonu Bamali, who confirmed the incident, said the worshippers were in the second sujood prayer when saw the lead affected portion of the mosque collapse on those sitting directly at the section. The royal father further explained that the victims were covered by debris from the wall built with mud, which had been in existence for the past 150 years. He, however, directed the worshippers to pray outside the mosque pending when repair works will be carried out. Meanwhile, the Kaduna State Governor Obasani has expressed sadness over the death of some victims of the incident. The Governor, who spoke through his Chief Press Secretary, Mohamed Shiu, at the funeral for the victims, commiserated with their families and the entire people of Zezo Emirate, praying the repose of their souls and quick recovery of the injured. In the meantime, the victims have been buried according to Islamic rights. And may their souls rest in peace. Now, in the meantime, the Christian Association of Nigeria Khan has extended its condolences to the Muslim Ummah following the tragic loss of lives in the collapse of a section of the historic Zaria Central Mosque during Friday's prayer session in Kaduna State. In a statement on Saturday, Khan President Archbishop Daniel Oko sympathized with the families who lost loved ones in the unfortunate incident and prayed for the quick recovery of the injured. Oko urged the government and all the relevant stakeholders to ensure a thorough investigation into the causes of the incident with the aim of preventing such accidents in the future and also ensuring the safety of worshippers in all places of worship across the country. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Abbas Tajuddin, has condoled with the, Emir, with the Emir of Zezo Ahmed Nuhubamali, his constituents and families of victims that died during the collapse of parts of the Zari Central Mosque on Friday. In a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Musa Krishi, on Saturday, he described the incident as disheartening and devastating. Abbas, who represents Zaria Federal constituency of Kaduna State, said he received the news of the unfortunate incident with shock, noting that he was pained by the death and injury of his constituents in the mishap. He prayed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give the families of those that lost their lives the fortitude to bear the losses and for the quick recovery of those that sustained injuries during the incident. And on security matters, troops of one division Nigerian army have continued its aggressive clearance operation against criminal elements in the division's area of responsibility. The operation has again yielded positive results as the gallant troops made contact with marauding bandits and criminal elements. Acting on credible intelligence on the 11th of August 2023, troops exploited Kabodi general area of Chukut local government area of Kaduna State and made contact with the marauding bandits and engaged them in a firefight. 
Troops of one division Nigerian army have neutralized three bandits in Kabodia village of Chiku local government area and Birni Nyeru village of Igabi local government area of Kaduna state. The troops during the operation recovered one AK-47 rifle loaded with 28 rounds of 7.62 mm, one camo jungle heart, three mobile phones, one head warner, one MP player, charms and cash. A statement by the Acting Deputy Director, Army Public Relations, One Division Nigerian Army, Lieutenant Colonel Musehaya, says the troops also rescued 10 kidnapped victims at Tambaba village of Igebi local government area. According to Yahya, the General Officer Commanding One Division Nigerian Army and Force Commander Operation Well Punch, Major General Ba Alabi, commended the troops and pleaded with the communities to continue to avail the Nigerian Army and other security agencies with timely and credible intelligence. Still on security matters, troops of Operation Hadarin Jaji have rescued two kidnapped victims less than four hours after their abduction at Mada community in Guso local government area of Zampara state. Those kidnapped were said to be the former provost of the federal Federal Technical College of Education, Guso, and his son, who were weeks away on Friday, 11th August. Troops of Sector 1 of Operation Hadarin Daji deployed at Forward Operation Operating Base, Mada in Zamfara State, Wild or Routine Patrol along Shimori, Endoto Road, at Mariki General Area, engaged the kidnappers in a gun battle for several hours, forcing the bandits to flee in disarray into the forest along the area and abandoning their victims. The troops safely rescued the two victims. Two operational motorcycles were recovered from the fleeing armed bandits. Meanwhile, the kidnapped victims have been reunited with their families amidst jubilation, while the troops continue to maintain aggressive vigilance and patrol in the general area. Over 200 women from Otese community in Guma local government area of Benue State on Friday barricaded the Mokurni Lafia Highway to protest the attacks in their communities by suspected husband. The latest attack, which prompted the protest, claimed three lives. Jimmy Azendi has more. Vehicular movement was halted for several hours at Otesi, where women demanded to speak directly with Governor High St. Alia. At home yesterday, uh, around 6.30, uh, we, see, we, see, we saw some people that, that are new face to us. We don't know them. So four of our brothers were sitting. So they started shooting and pushing them. So at long last, we discovered that in Kit 3, it's only one that survived. Otesi communities host to a camp where thousands of internally displaced persons are taking refuge, pending when they will return to their ancestral homes. The thing happened yesterday. One of my brothers, that three brothers that I killed, the one I follow, also they included, and the one where they follow me at back. So day before yesterday, they come and attack those my people that I killed that yesterday. Not only God, they served them that yesterday. And that day before yesterday. Then they still come back that yesterday to come my kid. The camp manager says, the place has been under several attacks, with displaced persons now living in fear. My camp members went outside to find food for their members in the camp. When they would go, Flannis killed three of them. That is what happened. I'm going to take proper care of our, uh, our people in camp. And the best way is to, they should make sure they can take us back to our ancestral home because we are tired of staying in camp. The security on the ground here are not doing anything about to help us. Meanwhile, the protesters left the road after the military intervened. Jimmy Azandi, Trust TV News, Makodi. Protesters against the recent military action in the Nigeria Republic on Saturday stormed the streets of Kano State. The protesters, who are residents of the state, embarked on the action to show their displeasure and non-support of military invasion of the country. During the protest, they chanted slogans like, Nigerians are our brothers, Nigerians are also our family, Niger is ours, we don't want war, war against Niger is injustice, a plot by the Western forces. 
The protest is part of the many calls from across Nigeria, especially northerners, who believe that Nigerians are relatives and share a lot in common. Hence, the need to resolve the impasse amicably. Thousands of people gathered in Nigeria's capital on Friday to demonstrate their support for last month's coup as regional leaders were considering military intervention to restore civilian rule. Since the July 26th military ousters of elected President Mohamed Bazoum, many Nigerians have joined junta organized rallies to show support for the generals, criticized Western powers, allowed Russia, which is vying for influence with the West in the region. The peaceful crowd on Friday numbered in the thousands. According to a Reuters witness, the rally began at a French military base in the capital, Niamey, before protesters with signs and flags separate into surrounding streets. The military takeover was the seventh coup in West and Central Africa in three years, and demonstrations in Niger have mirrored street signs in neighboring Mali and Burkina Faso after a coup between 2020 and 2022. Popular anger is targeted at former colonial power France, whose forces were kicked out of Mali and Burkina Faso after the coups there, and those presence in Niger is under threat. The Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS Parliament has cautioned against the use of military power towards tackling the military coup in the Jara Republic, stressing the need for diplomatic options to address the situation. Members of ECOWAS Parliament made the call during a virtual extraordinary plenary session held on Saturday. Speaker of the ECOWAS Parliament, Sidi Mohamed Tunis, presided over the session which had most lawmakers appealing to ECOWAS leaders to adopt dialogue to mitigate the situation rather than military intervention. Speaking, first Deputy Speaker of the Parliament, Idris Wasi, opposed the use of military might in resolving the coup dilemma in the Republic. Another Nigerian lawmaker and member of the ECOWAS Parliament, Ali Indumi, faulted President Bola Ahmed Tunibu of Nigeria and ECOWAS Chairman for unilaterally closing the Nigerian, Nigerian Niger border and cutting electricity without approval of the Nigerian National Assembly. Another ECOWAS parliamentarian, Hadija Satu Kamara, agreed with the submissions of Ndumi, stating that citizens must be considered before any other political sentiment. Niger President Mohamed Bazoum, who has been detained since being ousted by members of his guard last month, was seen by his doctor on Saturday. His entourage said amid rising concerns for his health, according to the doctor's report, the ousted president is fine. Fears have been mounting over the health and detention conditions of democratically elected Bazoum, his wife and 20-year-old son since the military seized power and took them captive on July 26th, the European Union and the African Union have joined all this in sounding the alarm for Bazoum. UN Rise Chief Volker Tok said Bazoum's reported detention conditions could amount to inhuman and degrading treatment in violation of international human rights. You are watching the news update on Trust TV. Coming off after the break. We take a look at how lucrative henna business is. Details of these and more after the break. Please stay with us.
Welcome back. And if you are just joining us, this is the news update on Trust TV. And here is the recap of some of our top stories. Death toll from Zaria Mox collapse rises to 10 as Christian Association of Nigeria condoles with Muslim Ummah. And troops neutralize three bandits, rescue 10 kidnapped victims, and recover AK-47 rifle in Kaduna State. And now moving on. Nigeria is contributing its quota to the global commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the face of increasing environmental threat across the world. Relevant agencies like National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency are supporting industries and businesses in transitioning to greener practices and reducing their carbon footprint. Habiba Dajai has more on this. Climate change and environment degradation continues to affect various regions differently in Nigeria. National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency has raised the bar to complement the Paris Agreement towards contributing to the nation's efforts with effective laws and policy for a safer planet. We have developed a total of 34 environmental regulations cutting across uh, all sectors of the environment. So 12 of these regulations are tell us towards reducing the emission of the greenhouse gases and uh, addressing issues of uh, environmental pollution and environmental degradation. Some of them include uh, national environmental control of vehicular emission from petrol and diesel engine. We have national environmental air quality control regulation. The agency has promised citizens enhancement of resilience in vulnerable communities and ecosystems towards combating the challenges posed by climate change. Yes, the agency is doing this to boost the resilience of the vulnerable communities. And uh, this uh, we do by sensitizing them. The best uh, way to go about it, and the best way to conduct the activities. For instance, most of us are in the habit of cutting down uh, trees, anyhow, and uh, most of this climate change is coming as a result of uh, some of this attitude. So, there's need for us to engage in massive tree planting to ensure that we get good drainages so that when it rains, because one of the causes of uh, the system flooding we are experiencing is a lot of climate change. Also, the Director General of Nestra, Ali Ujairu, has assured Nigerians of more technology and innovation to address environmental challenges more effectively. The agency is to use space to revive this because it's key to addressing these uh, issues of climate change. For instance, there is need for us to gather data, to gather it and store it because data is key to any decision making. So in generating this data, there are now sensitive equipment with good sensors that can measure concentration of pollutants down to micro ground level. We also uh, in need a lot of uh, working tools that are there due to the technology. So this data is generated and is stored in a very good and safe place. The Environmental Agency says it's ready to collaborate with governmental and non-governmental organizations to achieve the set objectives of environmental protection. Abibat Ajayi, Trust TV Abuja. Hannah Decorator says she pays her school fees and help her parents and the siblings from Hannah Decorating Business. This is a story of an accounting student of Kaduna Polytechnic, Fadila Ibrahim, who has abundant creativity in Hannah Design. Trustee Biz Bella Musa visited their family residence at Kudmimashi, Kaduna, and files in this report. Lele is a tree mostly grown in northern Nigeria and its liquid is used for decorations on women's skin, especially on legs and hands. In Hausalan, it is called Kunshi, while Kanuri call it Nalli. 
It is a long age cultural practice used by women in northern Nigeria, especially during wedding or naming ceremony and festivities like Salah. Kuishi, which is called henna decorations in English, has been modernized to meet the taste of the time with henna decorators springing up across the north. I was doing henna since when I was small. And henna is not something that you just wake up and see yourself doing it. It's creativity. Henna decorations varies depending on the situation and the season of festivity. The cadre, we have two types of henna. Am I right? So the, the casual is just for normal people. While the bride, the bride henna is for the people where, where they are getting married. Women do henna decoration during ceremonies, more especially sala, occasions, wedding, and so on, even naming ceremony. Henna decoration becomes another way of beautifying skin, as some women cannot do without it. Oh, I always do it. Because I like it, I love henna. And henna too is something that differentiates between a man and a woman. I like seeing design on my hand. I don't even like seeing my hand white like that. I like henna because henna is a design for women, ladies, and we usually do it. I'm encouraging women to do it because it's, it makes them beautiful and it, it makes their skin beautiful. Hena Decorations has been a lucrative business as it takes care of a dealer's needs. I achieve many things a lot. Like, I'm paying my school fees myself. I help my parents and my siblings. While advising young women to venture into trade and acquire skills for the betterment of their life, Fadila says her dream is to own a big henna design shop in the future. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. Away from Nigeria, police in Somalia's breakaway region of Somaliland said nine officers were ambushed and killed in gun battles between security forces and armed militia men loyal to the opposition. The attack occurred on Friday in a mountainous area some 95 kilometers from the region's capital, Hegeza. Police Commander Mohammed Adan Sagashi said Somaliland, which has claimed independence from Somalia since 1991, has never been recognized internationally nationally, but is often seen as a beacon of stability in a chaotic region. However, political unease has mounted in recent months. Since July, clan militia have taken up arms to protest against the October 2022 extension of the region's President Musi Bihi Abdes Tam. Somaliland's Electoral Commission last month said that the disputed vote for the president will be held in November 2024, 11 months after party nominations. And finally, on sports news, co-hosts Australia beat France 7-6 to in a thrilling penalty shootout to reach the semi-finals of the Women's World Cup for the first time in their history in their, on their history on a night of drama in Brisbane on Saturday. Australia now go to Sydney on Wednesday to face England after they defeated Colombia 2-1. Courtney Vine scored the winning penalty for Australia to end a remarkable shootout that saw both teams take 10 spot kicks when the cutter final ended 0-0 after 120 nerve minutes. Vine held her nerve to send the crowd into raptures and keep the Milders dream of winning the World Cup on home soil alive. Australia goalkeeper Mackenzie Arnold had missed a chance to win the shootout when her kick hit the post, but then saved twice from Kenza Daly after the VAR spotted she had both feet of her line the first time. Vicky Becho missed France's 10th penalty, and it was left to Vine to take Australia through by beating France's substitute goalkeeper Solène Durand, who had been sent on especially for the shootout. And with that, we have come to the end of the news update on Trust TV. Do not forget to follow us across on our media platforms and our YouTube live stream. I am Abdurrahman Omar. Thanks for watching and bye for now.